I have made a multiplayer game in 7 days, and this is how I did it. In this game you and your friends run the valet parking service. You need to park cars fast, efficient, without any damage. You will get rewarded on how efficient you do this, and uh, you will upgrade your service with more parking spot, more employees, and more. You will need to remember which key belong to each car, communicate with your friends where you park them, and retrieve them as fast as possible. You will also have in-game events will be implemented in the future devlogs. I've started day one with building the traffic system. I've set up a basic system, where all the cars can drive pretty smoothly around the map. The cars follow a path of road point, which guide them as they navigate the map. They handle intersection and stop signs, and the overall movement feel quite natural. The setups allow for realistic flow of traffic, which cars stopping and proceeding at intersection, based on, this, on their surrounding. While the system is simple, it's a solid foundation that I can build on and refine the development progress. The car controller receives input from an outside sword, which helps me implement a player car controller and an AI car controller. The AI currently handles basic driving mechanics, guiding cars to follow the designated path and interact with the environment. Although the car AI isn't perfect yet, it does the job for now. However, I have encountered multiple challenges. Large vehicles like trucks and SUVs have some trouble with sharp turns, often flipping or behaving weirdly when they rotate. This is definitely something I will be addressing to make sure all types of vehicles end up properly, without any unintended flip or crashes. In the second day of development, I have created the NPC system. I have designed it so when the player interacts with the car, the driver will get out and wait nearby for a while. This simulates the valet end of process, where driver drop off their cars and expect them to be taken care of. Once the driver leaves, the player can then park the car as a part of their valet duties. The player are notified when the car owner wants their car back. This has the layer of time management to the gameplay, requiring players to quickly retrieve the turn vehicles to the keep customers happy. At this time of development, you can technically take out from any driver anywhere on the map, but that won't be without consequences. In the final version, I plan to implement penalties for unauthorized car theft. This makes sure players stay focused on their duties. This will add another strategy to implement to the game, encouraging players to make smarter choices while managing the lot. On day 3 of development, I took the challenge of creating a player model in Blender. I am not very experienced with Blender, and modeling and drinking objects is still pretty new to me. Getting the player model done was an hard task. It took some trial and error, but I was able to create a basic model that fit the game style. To animate the player, I decided to use Miximo, a free website to offer a massive library of animation. After uploading my model, I picked out a few essential movement animation, like walking, running, and jumping and integrated them into the game. This saved me tons of time to, and allowed me to focus on getting the player character moving smoothly. For the rest of the week, I focused on implementing a multiplayer and networking features. This involved setting up a lobby system with a secure relay connection to the server browser for players to find and join game easily. I have decided to go with a peer-to-peer -peer approach combining with a client authorization to simplify the setup for process. Since this is a co-op game, meant to be played with friends, I'm not prioritizing anti-cheat measurement just yet. After all, the goal is to have fun with your friends. One of the bigger challenges I faced was syncing the player movement, animation and game event across the network, ensuring that the player animation plays smoothly for all connected players. For example, adding the player model for the local client while displaying the correct animation to other client requires a lot of fine-tuning, but after some hard work, I'm making progress and the multiplayer foundation is shaping up nicely. And that's it for this devlog. Thank you for tuning in and following along with the development of the game. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more update and behind the scene content. We've got a lot more planned and I'm excited to share it all with you in the next devlog.